For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Death is coming for you. Death is sure. And the reason why you're going to die is because you're a sinner. Romans 6.23 states the wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. Your sins will bring you to death. Unless you have something for your sins, upon your death you will be buried and you'll wake up in a place called hell. Where you'll be tormented. In torments being tormenting forever and ever without time. And yet, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, as your Creator, knows the condition you are in, and God has met your condition. By sending His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved of God, to suffer and to die, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Don't you die thinking that you and your religion or whatever you believe can take care of your sin. Don't you go off in eternity thinking that another man besides the man Christ Jesus can pay for your sins. When God himself offered his blood upon Calvary's tree, Acts 20:28, 20, the blood of God was shed upon Calvary's cross about 2,000 years ago because you are the sinner, not God. You are the one that's in trouble. You're the one that's diseased. And God the Holy, the Almighty, saw that we need something. And that something is the sinless perfection of holy blood be washed from our sins. And that was set upon down by Jesus Christ. If you die without Jesus and the blood atonement and the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, you will be condemned to a place called hell. And then off to the lake of fire. If you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, and then when you die, the Bible states, absent from the body and present with the Lord. You do not get to God, you do not get to heaven by anything that you think or could come up with, but by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Now this atonement by Jesus Christ is to be taken by faith. It's not to be taken orally. It is not a sacrifice that one can hocus pocus a piece of bread and a juice. It is something to be believed that the literal blood of God was shed upon the cross. It's not a sacrament. It's a sacrifice by God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to get to heaven. There is no other way to get to God. But by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. For God so loved the world that He gave 
He is offering to you a gift right now. The wages of sin is death. You're going to die. You know it. Not one of you can say you have immortality. If you do, you're a fool. Because you will face death one day because you are a sinner. But the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Only by Christ can you get into the eternal hope, eternal praise, and eternal glory of God the Father. Anything else other than Jesus Christ, it's the lake of fire. You've been deceived. You've been conned into thinking that something else can save your soul. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and so can you. This invitation is open to you today, right now. Behold, today is the day of salvation. You may not have a tomorrow. You may not have a minute. Inside your blood veins right now, you may have a little clock working its way to its brain. Now is the time to be saved. You may cross this road and flat as a pancake, as a, as a possum. Now is the time to call on the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. After He comes for His bride, the church, there is no other hope. Not for Gentiles. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. The Bible proclaims that go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's where religion stands away. That's where religion is found false. Religion has never come out of the grave alive. Jesus Christ not only came out of that grave alive, but he is seated at the right hand of the Father right now, presently, with God. No Pope, no pastor, no man has ever ascended out of the grave and is seated at the right hand of the Father at this moment. No other man, no other system, no other can get you to God unlike Jesus Christ can get you to God. You see, your sin condition, it's like a cancer. The only way to cut it out, the only way to remove that cancer is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else can do it. For the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes unto the Father. That is Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ saying, no man can come unto the Father but by me, he's saying, your religion? He's saying, your religion? Your hopes? Your facts? Your all in all must be settled upon Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ in the Bible is called the Blessed Hope. It's a salvation that is free. He doesn't pass a, clay, a plate for, his, for you to be saved. It's a free gift. And yet some of you have a hope that costs you money. And when you're done with your hope, whether you smoke it or whether you drink it, your hope is gone and you need to buy more hope. And then when that hope is done, you got to go for a greater hope. And you got to have more money. And yet, the blessed hope, God's hope, the Lord Jesus Christ is a free gift. It's an eternal gift brought to you by God the Father who created you. You see, God told Adam, as we sit here at the farmer's market, God said, do not eat of that fruit, for thou shalt surely die. And because man 
in his great wisdom, never listens to God. Death is because Adam took a bite of that fruit. God said not to, and Adam did. Now God is telling you to believe on His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and opposite of Adam, but disobeying God, you won't do that. See, that what we're not supposed to do, we do, and that what we're supposed to do, we don't do. And you're not going to march up in front of God, Jesus Christ, at the judgment and say, look how good I am, look how good my religion is, as God will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. There's no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. That name is not Mary. That name, that name is not Allah. That name is not a Pope. That name is not Smith. That name is the precious name, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. That little baby that was born in the manger grew up to die on the cross for our sins. That little baby that grew up in Mary's arms was buried. That 13-year-old child that sat at the temple and put those Pharisees to rest and put the scribes to, to wonder and put the, the, the religious people to, to great amazement of what this child knew arose from the grave. And God says, you want salvation, you got to get it through my son. You've got to hear the word. There it is. I am quoting to you from the Bible. I am not quoting man, but God. You are hearing what the Bible proclaims. You've got to take what God has said by faith. You've got to take the fact is that you are a sinner. And there are no degrees of sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And if you don't think that you're a sinner, let me talk to your spouse or let me talk to your parents. And we'll see how well you are. Sins not under the blood of Jesus Christ will put you into a lake of hell which burneth forever. Baptism will get you wet in the earth, but will get you wet. Will get you burned in a lake of fire for your salvation. Church attendance will get you into a lake of fire without Jesus Christ. Any religious, any religious denomination without the blood of Jesus Christ is lake of fire, including Baptists. Now I'm a Baptist. And I know plenty of Baptists are going to hell because they believe in something else other than Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way but the love of God. And the love of God is Jesus Christ. That's your message about love today. That God loves you. He sent His Son to die to suffer. And you need not to. A man that goes off into hell, in the lake of fire, is paying for his own sins, which have already been paid for that you need to receive, and you suffer in torment stupidly. Why pay for something when God's already paid for it? All you got to do is walk up to him and say, I want it.
If I were to tell you people that at the bank down the road right now, there's a check there for a million dollars for you. All you got to do is go into that bank, sign your name, and the million dollars is yours. And yet God says, I have a complete payment for your sin. And all you got to do is come to the one that has the payment, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and put your faith sign on the line to receive that payment. You need to realize that you're a sinner. All sin are sin. There are no degrees of sin. There is no one worse off than someone else. A person that stole the pencil will be in a devil's hell with a pedophile. Adolf Hitler will be in hell with many teenagers. The worst scum you can think of without Jesus Christ, you will be with them in the devil's hell. You're not good. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. You need righteousness to get into heaven. And there's only one righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That is it. If you cannot say the blood of Jesus Christ is saving my soul, that I know for a surety... That when I die, I'm going to heaven by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Then, friend, you're going to die and go to hell if you, you don't believe that. And you may not believe in hell. God don't care. God made it. He told us about it. The one that created hell spoke about it. And the one that created hell does not want you to go. The Bible says he is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. That he gave his son that you may not go to hell. You say, preacher, stop preaching about hell. That's what you need to be saved from. Hell. Hell is real. Got to warn you. I mean, if you were in your house right now, and I was walking by or driving by, and I saw flames shooting out of your window, I would expect that you would expect me to yell, FIRE! And yet, I am yelling, HELLFIRE! To save your soul. And to tell you that... The payment has been made for your sin. You can be washed in the blood and be made righteousness and have your name written down the Lamb's Book of Life. Because if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will be cast off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And yes, the holy, loving God will cast you into hell because you did not receive His Son. Yes, God is love, but God is holy. God cannot have sin in His presence. He must totally deal with sin and... That's the lake of fire. Or, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. You can burn, or you can be washed. You can be damned, or you can be made clean. It's your choice. And a lot of you are ignoring... And this is something not to put off. This is not something to make fun of. But though the Bible says you are and you will, and there are people who are. 
And yet the Bible says in, in Isaiah 1.18, God speaking, come now, now, come. Let us. Imagine the holy God saying to you, a pitiful creature made of dirt, God is saying to you, come now, let us reason together. On this Saturday morning, with this message being preached that many of you don't like, God is reaching down from heaven and saying, Come on now, let's go. Let's get together. Get over there with that guy, with that Bible that's in his hand, and let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, I can make them white as snow. Paraphrasing Isaiah 1.18. Rejecting God with his offer, Jesus Christ, is like walking into the doctor having cancer and saying, Oh no, doctor, I don't need your treatment. I'll do perfectly fine. And you'll die. Probably suffering. No, you walk in that doctor and say, Doctor, give me the chemo. Give me the medication. Give me everything I need to get rid of this cancer. And you will not come to God and say, God, give me your son. Give me the holy blood that I may be saved. You're a fool. You'll trust a man over God when it comes to your life. And you're not even guaranteed that chemotherapy will keep you alive. I know that for, for a perfect fact. Chemotherapy will not, for some people, keep you alive. But I know the blood of Jesus Christ will keep you alive. I know upon death, you can be absent from that body and be present with the Lord, or you can wake up in hell. There is no purgatory. There are no virgins. There is a God. There is a heaven. There is a hell. And you will face the God that you don't believe. You will face the true holy God that you did not want to believe. And without Jesus Christ, you will stand guilty. And you may come to God and say, well, I'm good, I give, I do, I did, I, 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 I. And Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures in the Gospel of Matthew, says, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You take your UNICEF, that's iniquity. You take eating and drinking Jesus' body and blood, that's iniquity. You take tithing to the church, that's iniquity. You take baptism, that's iniquity. You take Jesus Christ, that's the blessed hope. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it saved me. I am happy to proclaim the Word of God. I am happy to proclaim Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ outlasts all in all. Where's your bongo man that tried to sound now? He's gone, but Jesus is still preached. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You're not guaranteed a tomorrow. You don't know what this afternoon will be. Maybe the Lord will come while we're sitting here. Maybe I'll be preaching about Jesus and boom, we're gone. Where did he go? Then you talk about hell on earth with Satan reigning. And don't go running to the Christian video store and get the tapes on the beast and the tribulation because they're all wrong. The tribulation period is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the Jewish time. For you Gentiles to be saved is now. Your salvation rests on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Not the mark. Not the beast. Not enduring. But now. Behold, now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Come now, let us reason together, God says. Isaiah. See, I'm quoting from the Scriptures. I am quoting from the Bible. Come over here and challenge me. I will show you in print what I'm preaching. First, com completely, I will tell you, 
verbatim. Can you honestly say right now, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil? Without the drugs, without the alcohol, without the family. And yet the Bible says in 1 John, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have salvation. Do you know it? If you don't know it, you got troubles. Some of you maybe are here saved. What are you doing? You know Mark 16 says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. You know the book of Acts, they went out everywhere telling people about Jesus. What are you doing? How's your Christian growth? Are you a babe in Christ or are you aged in Christ? I can tell when you're aged in Christ. You come over here like, Wow, brother, thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Praise God that you're doing it. And I've seen babes in Christ come up and say, What on earth are you doing? I hear people come up, oh, Jesus would never do that, and you haven't read your Bible. The love of God is for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's got John 3.16, you see. You know, when you're watching your ball game, there's a sign, John 3.16. I read to you right now, John 3.16. The love of God is conditional upon you believing on Jesus. But let's look at John 3.36 again. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Amen. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon him. What's the wrath of God? Lake of fire. If you continue to go without Jesus, you're not okay. If you continue about your way, you're not okay. See, your way is a lie. And it's the way of death. God's way, through Jesus said, I am the way. Not a way, the way. The definite article. He says, I am the way, the truth. So there's got to be a lie out there. If Jesus is going to point out that he's the truth, there must be a lie somewhere. And that's in Satan. Satan will give you anything and but everything, and all about everything but Jesus. Well, let me take that back. I'm wrong. Satan will give you a Jesus. The Apostle Paul says that there's another Jesus out there. There are plenty of them. And you got to make sure today that the, the Jesus that you're believing on is the biblical God-sent Jesus. Because not all Jesuses are the same. There's a Jesus that you can eat and drink. That's the God of your belly. There's a Jesus that's not God. Well, that's not God's Jesus. There's a Jesus that he's fluffy and puffy and... And, you know, he just floats off the ground. Well, that ain't Jesus. There's a Jesus if you mumble, grumble, and talk in tongues. That's not Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible was, was the prophet spoke about. And he fulfilled. The Jesus that God approves of was born of a virgin. 
means a woman that had never been with a man. I gotta explain that word in America today. That Jesus is God and Jesus is man. The Jesus of the Bible was sinless. The Jesus of the Bible, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The Jesus of the Bible fulfilled the law 100%, which we cannot do. The Jesus of the Bible willingly and knowingly went to that cross, suffering and dying for our sins. The Jesus of the Bible was buried. The Jesus of the Bible is not in his tomb. The angels proclaim he is risen. Now, if your church still has Jesus nailed to the cross, you definitely got the wrong Jesus. Because the Jesus of the Bible, the gospel of the good news is that he died for us according to the scriptures. He fulfilled prophecy. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. I'm not saying you, but it says, what must I? But what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31, in your Bible. Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian unit. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and my Savior. Then he went down in the water. The dying thief looked to the, to the dying Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. And there's something amazing about the message of Jesus. The true message of Jesus. It hasn't changed in 2,000 years. It's still believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Some churches have changed it, okay? Man has changed it. Religion has changed it. Baptists have changed it. People have changed it, but God's message is still, believe on my son and thou shalt be saved. That has not changed. And the problem that you have right now, and you've got a big problem, because you're going to die, but that's not the problem. You're going to face God one day, and you're going to say, God, I never knew. Now here comes the problem. God's going to say, I sent you a preacher to you that preached out of my word and told you exactly what the gospel is and told you exactly what you're supposed to do, and you denied him. He told you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And when you're standing at that great white throne judgment, God's going to say, hey, listen, that's exactly what he told you. You rejected my word, you rejected my message, and you're going off to hell for rejecting. No ifs, ands, or buts. See, you are without excuse at the, at the sound of my voice in your ear. Like it or not, You have heard the way of God. You have heard the 
way of God through honesty. You have heard the word of God through life, through Jesus Christ. And if you reject it, you here at the Farmer's Market in Daytona Beach, Florida, USA, cannot say, I never knew. Because I told you through the Bible what you need to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You now know. And if you don't get with God, and you don't repent of your sin, you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will suffer the wrath of God, and you were told how not to. And God will not take, well, I don't like his tone. I don't like his loudness. I don't like his way. Outside the wheelchair, the preaching of the street has gone through all true Christianity through the Bible to Jesus Christ. Where do you think he preached? Let me think. Hold on, people. Listen. The Sermon on the Mount doesn't sound like a church building. At Mars Hill. That don't sound like a church building. Jesus took the boat and rolled out, out, out into the sea a little bit. That don't sound like a church. And you ought to be thankful that we're here because you know what? You've got two options for tomorrow morning. What are them two options? One, you're never going to set foot in church in your life. That's why we're here. Because you won't be in church. So while you're not in church, we'll be here to tell you that Jesus saved. They don't even have funerals or weddings in churches anymore. And number two, you might go to a church tomorrow that will not preach Jesus as Savior, will not tell you how to get saved, will tell you the devil's way, and Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that there are ministers and pulpits that are Satan. So you may not go to church. That's why we're telling you. You may go to a church that's not a church, that's not right, that's just as wicked as Satan himself because it's built upon Satan. And guess what? You ain't going to hear the truth, so we're here to tell you the truth. You know how I know number three doesn't count for you? Because if you weren't a good Bible-believing church, you would be standing with us, you would be standing somewhere else telling people about Jesus.
Don't be fooled by the Jehovah Witnesses coming knocking to your door. Because their God that they bring to your door states that God is not Jesus, and Jesus is not God. Well, you got a problem. And tell them I said that. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I never felt so clean in my life. Upon the blood of Jesus Christ, away from all that nonsense of that Catholic Church. Nothing in that Catholic Church ever washed away my sin. But the man Christ Jesus cleanses me from all sin. And I sit here telling you, I'm going to heaven by one thing. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. The message of Jesus Christ is so important and so wonderful. That's why we're here, trying to be here every Saturday. You ever see a Christian hymnal? How many songs are in there about one man? Mary don't have that many hymns. Allah don't have that many hymns. You don't last long enough with a bomb strapped to you. Religion will kill you, but Jesus Christ died. Religion wants blood, but Jesus Christ shed his blood. Religion takes life, Jesus gives life. I mean, look at the American Red Cross. Give life. Isn't that just funny? What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Whether Christ comes today, or a hundred years from now, that will be the true same message. No matter how many people mess it up, how many people change it, but that is God's message. Jesus saves and only Jesus saved. And you can take these words, you can take them to heaven, or you can reject them into hell. You can believe or you can burn. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, when, you, when something perishes, you throw it out. Those who do not believe on Jesus Christ, God throws them out into the incinerator. And that incinerator called the lake of fire burneth forever. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You don't know what's going to happen. I guarantee many people died this morning 
and there was a to-do list that they'll never do again. On the very top of your to-do list is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then let everything else fall in the hand. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Because there's nothing else. Remember, as of now, you cannot tell God I never knew. You'll stand before God one day. Hopefully at the judgment seat of Christ. As saved Christians. You don't want to be at the great white throne judgment. Not this day and age. Because if you're at the great white throne judgment today, there's no checking if, if your name is in the land's book. Of, it's not there. Without Jesus Christ, John chapter 3 says you're condemned. I mean, really, are you really willing to bet your eternal soul on what God said? Are you willing to take that risk? There are people who take risks at these, uh, these adventure parks, amusement places, with roller coasters. This big slingshot thing they have over here in Daytona Bay. There are people who take their risk for their lives like that, but they will not take God at His word. You're a fool. We're coming up in February. A bunch of idiots are going to make a whole bunch of left-hand turns at high speed. They're risking their life of a car accident and dying going off into eternity to win a stupid whatever they win. And you won't take God at His word. You're a fool. As I said before, you could have one little clot in your bloodstream right now, and in an hour you're gone. You could be a vegetable for the rest of your life and never be able to make any decision. Or you could be just dead in hell. Imagine dying today after hearing about what God says how not to get to hell. You're dying today and you end up in hell. You're a fool. You would be a fool today to die and end up in hell after hearing what God's told you how not to get to hell. I'll call you such a fool that I'll state my name on it. Stiley Hayward said that if you were to die right now and end up in hell after hearing the gospel and end up in hell, you're a fool after what God's told you today. Put my name on that. I signed my name to that. God will call you a fool too. Look it up in the Bible. Look at all the fools in the Bible. And I don't know. Maybe you all have an extra day. Maybe you will not have an extra day. But God said, believe on my son. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're without excuse. 